Donbass, I mean, people call it the Donbass or Donbass. I'm not sure what the correct, precise one is. You can tell us that. It's a region that many of us will literally have never heard of, known it, never turned our minds to. Um, what, where, what's its history? Tell us where, where the sort of the population of, of Donbass starts. Well, it, it's, it's, a, it's a big coal basin and it straddles the present day Ukrainian and Russian borders. And those coal deposits were first exploited under a concession from the Tsar by a, a Welsh um, engineer and ironmaster called John Hughes. And he, he sailed for Russia with lots of equipment and stuff in, in 1870. Um, and over the next 20 years, he, he, he established coal mines, iron ore mines, railways, um, brick factories and hospitals and schools and so on for all his uh, employees. And that is the beginning of Donetsk. It was originally called Yuzovka, after him, after Hughes. Oh, really? Um, and, how, and this may be a very oversimplified question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. How Russian is it? Because that's really at the heart of this dispute. There's lots of Russian speakers there. Uh, it's Ukrainian territory. It's Ukrainian sovereign territory. We know that, but it's become disputed because of Russia's attitude towards it. Is it possible to gauge just how Russian part of that is? Well, the, the, the latest reliable census, censuses, of course, um, date from before uh, Russia's grab of it in 2014. So if you look at those, it's about what well, people put down on the ethnicity, um, uh, under ethnicity uh, in those censuses. About half, half of the people in the region put Ukrainian, about half of them put Russian. Um, however, the, the ethnic Russian uh, proportion of the population is concentrated in the cities because those those are the descendants of people who moved in to the cities for work during various waves of industrialization at the end of the 19th century, then in the 30s with all the five year plans, and then also post war um, under Khrushchev and Brezhnev and so on. Um, so it, in the cities, you hear much more Russian than Ukrainian on the streets. Um, on the other and, and all people, there was a pro Russian voting bloc as well, pre the 2014 um, grab by Russia. But it was pro-Russian in the sense that it wanted to pay less taxes to Kiev and was doubtful about NATO. It wasn't pro-Russian in the sense of wanting to actually reunify with Russia. That wasn't on the table politically. It, there was a strong sense of sort of local patriotism and um, lo a very strong local identity really built around coal mining. And those coal seams had been well worked out by the end of the Soviet Union. The coal mining would come unprofitable and the mines were being propped up by subsidies. So um, but people nonetheless saw themselves as, you know, supporting the rest of Ukraine and, you know, paying more in taxes than they got back. And that created a lot of resentment. So on that basis, just finally, Anna, what's, what's it worth to, to Ukraine and to, to, to Russia? Is it strategically, economically? Is, what's, the, what's the political importance of it? Well, Donetsk and Luhansk obviously have been Russian ruled since 2014 by our proxies. Um, that experience for people living there has been has been bad. You know, they haven't had all the sort of wonderful up in living standards that they'd, they'd hoped for. And people outside that area know that. Um, and now, of course, they're being bombed and shelled by Russian troops. So to think that they're pro-Russian is, pro you know, we, we can't tell there aren't Poles, but some... It seems extremely unlikely anybody there much is still pro-Russian. I mean, from Kiev's point of view, it's a Rust Belt area and it's a very poor, apart from Donetsk itself, it's a poor, all those towns around there, poor one factory towns um, where the factories have often closed or just dependent on subsidies still. You know, it's not, it's not a, economically speaking, it's not a prize. Uh, however, you know, ever since 2014, a lot of blood has been spilt, yeah. preventing the Russians taking more of that area. Um, and Ukrainians rightly think that if you give Putin an inch, he'll take a mile. You know, they've been saying that for the past eight years. And now they've been proved very much right. So they're very keen to hang on to it. Uh, amazing. Stuff. That's really interesting. Uh, Anna, thank you so much for joining us this morning. That's Anna Reid, the historian, author of Borderland, A Journey Through the History of Ukraine. Mm -hmm.